Bonjour à tous. Uh, my name is Adrien Vestergeim. I work for BNP Paribas and the French Commercial Bank. And um, I am the AI program director, as it was said. But I actually do not work on AI, because AI is self-driving cars, deepfakes, composing music, writing books, playing chess, go, whatever. Um, no, I work on a subfield of, of AI that I call um, AI for business. And let's dive into the value, which is a key thing, of course, in AI for business, the value you should expect out of your AI initiative, depending on your maturity level. Um, to do that, we'll have to define the um, baseline. So baseline is when, is, uh, when you do absolutely nothing. If you do nothing, you will still get some value out of AI, because you have a smartphone, there's AI in it, because you have providers, they'll use AI. But nevertheless, let's call that the sea level, right? And now let's dive into this AI ocean. Um, if we want to do that, we need some material. First material we need is a simple Gen AI approach using a good generative chatbot, such as Le Chat by Mistral, for instance. We will deploy that massively we, uh, in the organization. Um, we will not forget, as we are quite skilled in AI, we will not forget, of course, the adoption part, which is absolutely key in those uh, Gen AI um, experiences, and that will deliver operational efficiency. You will gain plus 5% additional margin. Alors, one remark on the additional margin. It's not a promise I make you. It's not even the figures we have at BNP Paribas. Um, it's a consistent magnitude based on my professional uh, experience and knowledge I get on through sharing that you should get in the end. That's what you should expect out of that kind of initiative, right? Important. Um, so we've got our um, first level, simple Gen AI level, maturity level. If we want to go a bit deeper, then we will need new materials. We will need data science, MLOps skills, um, and we will become ourselves gold diggers. We will search for that golden nuggets, which is this great AI use case, which is super cheap and will bring a lot of value. That's the use case maturity level. Going there, searching for that golden nuggets, we will deploy several AI solutions and eventually get an additional plus 10% margin. Great. We've been there at BNP Paribas for several years. And being there, we understood there was a third level I would like to uh, dive uh, again into. So that level, I call it global AI approach, which is in a systemic way, you will put AI everywhere it is relevant and brings value to the company. That should lead you to a global plus 25% additional margin, right? If you sum all the things you had in this diving. Um, great, super cool. There's a little stress here. It's, it's, you, you can't actually do all of the use cases you think of. It's not possible, just can't do it. Um, when I go and discuss with the business lines, I have I can make an infinite list of ideas. I'm not even able to assess them all. So how you do them all, it's actually not the point. What you sh should do here in this uh, maturity level is to switch from the use case perspective, where uh, you're looking for that golden nugget, to AI as a product perspective. Let me give you an example. Over the last months, years, I actually received from my business lines several um, needs. There was a link between those needs, but it took me some time to uh, see it. Some asked me for um, trainings that we could produce for our customers, but at low cost, okay? Some asked me for HTML, personalized web, web content, videos, uh, text, email, letters. That would have been 10 use cases. And if I start to do the stand, it's going to be expensive. Expensive to build, expensive to run. But if you see it in another way, if you say, no, that's one need, 
that's producing personalized customer content. Then you've got your product approach. You build one brick, which is the knowledge of how we speak to customers, that's common, and then you have a specialization layer to produce web content, video, um, um, text, images, letters, everything like that, right? So you do that by searching for synergies and um, actually seeing your AI approach, not as a use case, but as a product. Great, we've got a third level. So now, if you want to go there, because we are not fully here yet, so we are on our way, we are still learning on that. I would like to share with you three advices, three learnings we had. First one, and that's going to explain this uh, product approach, is uh, look far. Three years ago, we had that great project, um, easy one, for a small team of users uh, that were handling uh, customer emails with a simple feature, which was email triaging. And uh, we were happy with that project, but when we looked at the value expected, it was much smaller than the cost of the project. ROI was quite negative. We were about to stop it. Three years later, we are still working on that project. It's called uh, Smart Inbox. It's an AI product, not a use case, an AI product. And we switch our understanding of that project, of that thing, because we understood that building the email triaging was not just one use case. It was the first step to develop several features for, of an, an email assistant, a smart inbox. Um, example of features you can put here are email triaging, quite useful. Uh, then it's proposition of answers that you could generate because already written or with GenAI. It's automated answers, where your confidence level is quite high. It's um, attachment management. It's sorting of the emails, depending on the uh, customer value, that kind of thing. That's a feature you want to develop. And you don't want to serve 20 people. You want to serve all of your employees who are actually managing emails for uh, customers. And when you look at that project that way, then the ROI is quite huge. That's a big part of the value that we um, identified. Look far. Do not stop at the first use case. That might not be with a positive ROI. Second advice is, uh, if you look far, also look deep. Don't hesitate to challenge what you have. So that was two years ago. We had that great process, uh, intelligent document processing, um, uh, with an external provider. And it was working OK. There was AI in it. Great for me. But business was complaining because it was still a bit expensive. So we lifted the hood, looked inside um, what was done, and measured the uh, actual accuracy they had. It was something close to 50%, which is great. It's much better than nothing. It's a good decision to have deployed that several years ago. But when we compare that to other solutions with a proper test that we had on our documents with open source solution, then uh, we understood that the expectation was not correct here. It should not be 50%, the expectation, but 90%. We even had 99% on some documents. So there's a lot of value here also to search for, right? In our uh, diving into the value, do not forget what is half done. Don't hesitate to challenge, be demanding, on, uh, in, uh, ask AI to, uh, to produce great things. Um, Last advice I would give you, um, it was measure things. It was one year ago when we started our uh, GenAI journey. I had, at the time, fears of hallucinations. And um, that picture is a very good example of the fear you can have. Um, I had also feelings with some um, generative chatbots. Um, that LLM is speaking quite well French. This one is summarizing, OK. I don't like this one too much because of the English. But you can't make decisions with fears and feelings. You need facts and, more important, figures. So we started to work with uh, Giscard, that was said um, this morning, on uh, twice. Um, we started to work with Giscard on measuring the remaining risk that we have with our customer-facing generative assistant. 
that's super important, super useful, because when we will want to deploy it, that's going to help us mitigate something quite important for the bank, as you know, the risks. Great. So three advices, uh, three maturity level. I, I don't know the future. Um, there might be a false maturity level. We might learn some other things, I'm sure. But what I'm sure of is that there's going to be a lot of learnings in the future, in the coming months and years. So hope to talk again with you. Have an excellent day. Thank you for your time.